Okay, this example is going to hopefully help you follow up, finish the example from class the other day, um, where we were analyzing a function that was telling us about particle motion in a straight line, and we were given the position function. So if you want to pause the video and check your answers, A, B, and C over here on the right were the ones that we had done in class, and then on the left-hand side, you see the ones that you should have been able to get picking up from wherever you left off. Then I'm going to go ahead and talk through, part D was very similar to part C, so just a different interval, but I would have expected you to do the same thing. I'm going to pick up with part E, and I'll do a quick talk through of what you should have done. So I'm going to, again, pause the video if you need to check, and then I'm moving on. Okay, so hopefully we checked answers, and you can certainly fast forward. I'll try to keep this brief, but I am going to try to give you examples here. So if you need to pause it, or if you need to fast forward, go ahead. Part E, we were finding average velocity of the particle during the interval five, 2 to 5. So average velocity is displacement over time, or maybe you like to think of it as delta S over delta T, S being my position. It's my change in position over my change in time. So what I did for that is I plugged in 5 into my position function. Um, and it's supposed to be a 5. I don't like S's because they look the same as 5's for me. S of 5 minus S of 2, position at 5 minus position at 2 over 5 minus 2. So that gave me a 3 in the denominator. My numerator came out to be 8 minus 2, which was 6, giving me my final answer of 2 meters per second, if we're going to put our units with that. Part F, instantaneous velocity. Instantaneous velocity is the derivative of the position, is my velocity function. And then when I, I went and found velocity at 2 and velocity at 5, just by substituting in my 2 and my 5 in for t. I think you can handle that one, so I'm going to let you go back if you were stuck on that. Part G was instantaneous. Well, I didn't use the word instantaneous, but I didn't use the word average, so we're going to assume acceleration at a point. I want instantaneous if I'm asking for it in, at a particular point. So this would have been my second derivative of position, or my first derivative of velocity would have been my acceleration. So you have the derivative already. We called it velocity. Now take the derivative again. And then we were finding acceleration at 2 and acceleration at 5. Is the particle speeding up or slowing down at each point? So now here's where we need to clarify something um, about what it means to speed up and what it means to slow down. It has everything to do with the signs of velocity and acceleration. We'll start with the easy one. If your velocity is positive, If your velocity is positive or greater than zero, and your acceleration is greater than zero, also positive, then that means you're traveling forward and you're accelerating in a forward motion, so therefore you're speeding up. That one's pretty easy. Now what happens if your velocity is positive, but your acceleration is negative? Well, think about it. If your velocity, let's talk, talk about throwing a ball up in the air. If your velocity is positive, that means the ball is being thrown up in the air, so it has positive velocity, it's going up. But your acceleration is negative because there's the force of the acceleration due to gravity is pulling down on the ball, and that's why things don't just go up infinitely into space. When you throw a ball, it comes back down because your acceleration is slowing it down. So it keeps going up, but it's slowing down on the way up. So that's my slowing down case. Same thing when you're in a car and you're driving forward. You have positive velocity because you're driving forward, but you press on the brake, and now your acceleration is negative, and it's stopping you. You still keep moving forward, but at a slower rate. So that would be our cases of positive velocity. Now let's go to negative velocity. If your velocity is negative and your acceleration is negative, then you're moving in the backwards direction, but you're accelerating in that direction. Or back to the ball example, the ball is coming down because it's got negative velocity, so it's traveling downwards, and acceleration due to gravity is pulling the ball down at a faster rate, because um, that's what gravity does, and that's why 
as the ball gets closer and closer to the earth, it's actually traveling faster. The higher it draws from, the faster it's going by the time it gets close to the earth or hits the ground. So that would be a case of speeding up. And if your velocity is less than zero but your acceleration is positive, then we've got a case where we've got moving backwards, we're moving backwards, but our acceleration is positive, pushing us forward, so we're slowing down. It's the same idea as the ball being thrown up or the braking. Um, ignore that car alarm, if you can hear that. Same idea as braking the car, where we're going forwards and the braking is causing us to slow down or accelerate less quickly, but in the opposite direction. Now, hopefully those examples made sense. Um, if they didn't, ask your physics teacher for a better explanation. The shortcut that we can use, there's good news, there is kind of an observation we can make here. The two cases where we're speeding up, pay attention to the signs of your velocity and acceleration. In the first case, velocity and acceleration are both positive, and in the second case, they're both negative. So our kind of our simple rule for ourselves is if the velocity and acceleration are the same sign, then we're speeding up. If they're opposite signs, then we're slowing down. Okay, that'd be a good thing to write in your notes. Back to G, I asked if the, if the particle was speeding up or slowing down at each point. So what I would do is I would actually, once I find my acceleration at 2 and 5, I would note whether they're positive or negative. Um, I'll just give you a little quick, quick FYI here. Acceleration comes out to be positive and negative positive for 2 and negative for 5. So then I would actually find my velocity at each of those cases. So I would find my velocity at 2 and my velocity at 5. I don't actually care about the value, I just want to know if it's positive or negative. And I got velocity was greater than 0, so that's also positive. Velocity at 5 was less than 0. So I've got, if you take a look at my signs here, I've got positive and positive, same sign means speeding up negative and negative, again same sign, and this is this case of speeding up. So in both of those cases that's how I got speeding up. Now I'm skipping some of the calculations that I think you could do on your own. Looking at h, at what point does the particle have a velocity of 3 meters per second? So you should have a velocity function. Go back to your velocity function, which was the derivative of your position function that you already found at some point. Um, and we want to know when is the velocity equal to 3 meters per second. So not what is the velocity at time 3, it's when is the velocity 3 meters per second. So that would be 3 equals velocity function and solve for your time value. And I'm going to let you do that one. Um, I would be at what point does the particle have an acceleration of negative 10 meters per second. So now I'm taking my acceleration function, which is something and I'm going to say acceleration is negative 10 and set that equal to my acceleration function. Sorry, I'll stop being lazy, lazy here. Acceleration function was negative 6t plus 14. So now I'm going to solve for time and then I'm going to figure out the other part of that is Explain what is happening at those points in terms of position and velocity. So I'm only going to have one answer to this because it's a linear function at this point. So in terms of position and velocity, I'd have to look at my graph and do a little more analysis for this. I'm ending up getting time equals 4 for when my acceleration is negative 10. And then I'm going to go ahead and probably plug in 4 into my position function and my velocity, for sure velocity, because I want to know if it's speeding up or slowing down, that has to do with my sign. So I know my acceleration is negative, that was given to me right here, acceleration is negative, so I would find out what my velocity at 4 is, and it comes out my velocity is 0. So I have a case where my velocity is 0, so I guess it's not speeding up or slowing down at this point. If you take a look at what's happening around that, you can find out that your velocity is negative, um, or your velocity is going from positive to negative, which means that your 
function is changing directions from going in the positive direction to the negative direction, right to left. Okay, it helps if you look at the graph at that point. I'm not going to take the time right now to graph it, but you can certainly take a look at your graph. The last part here is describe the movement of the particle on the interval from 0 to 6. And this is part J. Include all intervals when the particle is speeding up and slowing down, as well as commenting on what direction it's traveling. So, we're going to definitely tie back into what we did a minute ago with our conclusion that speeding up happens when our acceleration and velocity have the same signs. So, if I'm using that idea, I need to figure out some signs here. I'm going to steal some stuff that I already did because I already know when my velocity changes sign. I'm going back to part A, and we figured out velocity changes signs at two-thirds and four seconds. So, I'm going to break it right now into the intervals of... 0 to 2 thirds two thirds to 4 and 4 to 6 because that's when my velocity is changing signs so all I need to do is pick numbers in between there pick um, time values in between 0 and 2 thirds and between 2 thirds and 4 and between 4 and 6 if I haven't already found them and I can find out the sign of my velocity. So I'm going to do that and I'm picking 1 half and I'm going to get that the velocity is less than 0 and now I'm picking 1 because that's between 2 thirds and 4. My velocity is now greater than 0. It should be different because I changed direction and then I'm going to get that my velocity for this section is less than 0. Okay. Now, I need to know about my acceleration. So the first thing I need to do is actually a little side note. I don't think I've done it yet. I need to figure out when my acceleration changes sign. So that may or may not be happening at 2 thirds or 4. It may be somewhere in between there. So a little side note is I'm going to go over here and set my acceleration equal to 0. Acceleration function was negative 6t. plus 14, that gives me time is 7 thirds when my acceleration is 0. Okay, good news is the acceleration is only changing signs once. It's right here at 7 thirds. Bad news is that's not representing my intervals. That's like actually in between 2 thirds and 4. So that means I need to actually get rid of that interval and I need to split it into two intervals. So I'm going to change this interval to be 2 thirds to 7 thirds. It's not going to let me erase it. So I'm going to cross out this 4 and I'm going to make this a 7 thirds there. And then I'm going to add an interval here, 7 thirds to 4. Now I know in both of those cases my velocity is greater than 0 for this one and this one. The only reason I split it up is it's at that point that my acceleration changes signs. So acceleration, now I'm going to plug in a value and I'm just going to pick a number less than 7 thirds, so I'm going to pick 1, and if I plug it in here I get negative 6 plus 14, gives me a positive value. So acceleration is positive for this entire area. So really you only need to write it once right in here. I'm just writing it for each interval that I have. And acceleration is negative for this entire interval because it only changed sign once right there. So that would be for both of those intervals. Now that I have that, I'm going to check my signs and make my conclusions. So I've got greater than and greater than. Since my signs here match up, this would be one sp place where my particle is speeding up. And then I've got a less than and a less than. So this is also speeding up. And then the reverse is happening when I've got less than and greater than, greater than and less than. These two sections would be my slowing down. And that should make sense. If you think about what's happening, it's changing directions, it speeds up and then it slows down and vice versa. Hopefully that helped um, with how I got my answers. Um, 
and feel free to ask me in class if you have more questions. But I think that should help you be successful with the rest of the problems you're going to try.